chapter 2 I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will look out to see what he will speak by me and what I shall answer when I am reproved and the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that a man may read it swiftly for the vision is yet for the appointed time and, and it declareth of the end and doth not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not delay behold his soul is puffed up it is not upright in him but the righteous shall live by his faith yes moreover wine is a treacherous dealer the haughty man abideth not he who enlargeth his desire as the nether world and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all peoples Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting riddle against him, and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his! How long? And that ladeth himself with many pledges. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall exact interest of you, and awake that shall violently shake you, and you shall be for booties unto them? Because you have spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil you because of the men's blood for the violence that's done to the land and to the city and to all that dwell therein woe to him that gaineth evil gains for his house that he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil you have devised shame to your house by cutting off many peoples and have fortified your life for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and established a city by it sin. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people labor for fire, and the nations weary themselves for vanity? For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth your venom thereto, and makest him drunk, and also that you may look on their nakedness. You are filled with shame instead of glory. Drink you also, and be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto you, and filthiness shall be upon your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon shall cover you, and the destruction of the beast, which made them afraid, because of men's blood, and for the violence done to the land, to the city, and to all that dwell therein. What profiteth the graven image, that the maker thereof hath graven it, even the molten image? and the teacher of lies, that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone arise. Can this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. All right, let's go to verse 1. Now, yesterday, Habakkuk was prophesying of the end. Habakkuk means to em embrace, to embrace the truth, to embrace the understanding. And Habakkuk was talking about now these men who are causing the people to go astray causing them to err and what they've done is they've actually they've made an idol and they've caused everybody to go unto it even imputing now God into their God into this idol that they've made or this they've set up a pillar however you want to look at it it's something that causes a shadow now between God and you and we'll be picking it up in verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will look out to see what he will speak by me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Habakkuk is saying now he is going to set himself up and he is going to be paying attention and he's going to be watching now. And he's going to be in the watchtower, this this tower. And this is in the understanding of God. And through the law, God shows you this. 
when you become obedient to the law, you realize that all the, the rest of the world doesn't even care about the law. And they've transgressed the law. And, and once you start understanding things, it's pretty simple what's going on. And we will be able to easily see this great, marvelous work God's done. For God's done this, and, and we're going to find out that even in this chapter. Verse 2, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that a man may read it swiftly. And God tells Habakkuk to write it down on on some in books. Write it down in books. Write it down on paper. Write it down on the tables that which can record it. That a man may read it swiftly. And man may read it swiftly is a little bit off, you know, uh, King James says that a man may run when he reads it, and and this is really basically what it what it means that when when the understanding of this vision comes, that a man may run and even run and read this at the same time. Three, for the vision is is yet for the appointed time, and it declares of the end. And does not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not delay. And that's exactly what happened, and that's exactly what come, what did, because see, Habakkuk wrote this vision down, and for, from then it would be a, a while, because one vision was coming to an end, and God was making another, and he was telling of it by the prophets, he says, wait now, because it will come. And when it does, it will not delay. And we're going to find out this, even this comparison of Sisera and how Sisera was destroyed. See, the association turned on him. For, behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright in him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. And his soul is puffed up means... He, he, he has lifted himself up a little bit. And, and the law, he's not being exactly lawful. But the righteous shall live by his faith. And basically that means that these that seek understanding, these that are going to follow now his example. Five, yes, moreover, wine is treacherous dealer. And the haughty man abideth not. He who enlarges his desire as the netherworld and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all peoples. And this wine is that deals treacherously now is this wine of men and their understandings. It becomes mingled. And this haughty man abideth not. This man who is proud and, under, and actually he is accustomed to drinking of the wine. He doesn't stop. He just keeps on adding to it. See, and keeps on adding and adding and adding. And what it does is it finally builds it up. And it's finally formed up now. And it's, it takes a while because these that keep on drinking the wine keep on getting drunk. Keep on adding to it. And it slowly builds up this idol. It builds it up. He who enlarges his desires as the netherworld. And is as death. And cannot be satisfied. And that is what goes on. See because as they build this idol up. They are enlarging now. And their desire is like the netherworld. It's like this world below. This fleshful world, this world of death, and is as death because now the wages of sin is death, and the people are allowed to sin. Why? They are basically taught that they don't have to obey the law. See, they've made a way around the law. He can't be satisfied. It can't be satisfied, this beast. And it gathers all the people up. It gathering and heaping up all the nations even unto it. And what it is is, is like stacking up firewood now to 
be burned. 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting riddle against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his! How long? And that ladeth himself with many pledges. And now we've took this and built it and made it into one. God's using it as a, a masculine him. Why? Because it's going to come against God. It's, it's presented itself against God. We're going to find the people are going to take up a taunting riddle now against it. Say, woe to him that increases that which is not his. See, Because they gather up now. That which belongs to God. These souls of men are God's. And God sent the law for them to obey. But they made another covenant. We're going to find that out. And that ladeth himself with many pledges. And these pledges are debt. See, that taken on now your debts. These debts you owe God. How, because you've robbed God. See, you've not offered your your sins unto God for forgiveness. You've not went to God for forgiveness of your sins and made atonement for your sins there according to the law, but have went and gave your debt to another. And hey, you took up your pledge. See? And they've had, and it's just added now to their misery. Seven. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall exact interest of you, and awake that shall violently shake you, and shall be for booties unto them? And this is exactly what's going to happen. This is what happened to Sisera. This was that example. He was destroyed by those that, that had befriended him, that was of his own tent. He went in seeking comfort, and he got the tent stake drove through his head. Eight. Because you have spoiled many nations, and all the remnants of the people shall spoil you, because of men's blood, and for the violence done to the land, and to the city, and to all that dwell therein. Because this is a violence that they do. This is a violence how they teach lies. They've raised up a, an, an image there and made people go in unto it. This is, and this is the men's blood. See, when you, they go in unto this, they're murdered. This is murder unto God. For they're, they're causing you to pass into the fire and you're being destroyed. You don't ever get to live. This is the violence that's done to the land and this is, and to the city and all that dwell therein. It's all, all the earth. This is what's being done. Nine. Woe to him that gaineth evil gains for his house, that he may set his nest on high. That he may be delivered from the power of evil. And ain't nobody going to deliver you but God himself. There's no man, no group of men, got the power. See, only God can. But they've tried. They've tried. And they, they bring these gains and they think they're building up their little house. And they've got one on every corner. You see, it's all going to come to an end. And, and really, that's what the prophets are telling and speaking of. You have devised ten. You have devised shame to your house by cutting off many peoples and have fortified your life. And for this purpose, this is what was done. This shame to your house, what house? We'll find out. We're going to find out. We don't know. And you've cut off many peoples. They don't know they're cut off. They've taken in, but they're cut off from life. They're allowed to sin. And they've used this now. To, and, and, and the similitude of him, he has used it now, this one of the end time, to fortify his life. Thinking you can live forever by this. Eleven. For the stone shall cry out of the wall. And the beam out of the timber shall answer it. But see, even of this which you have built, the stones which you built the house out of, and the timbers you built the house out of, even these shall testify against you. Twelve. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood and established the city by sin. Woe to him that builds a town with blood. Woe to them.
that have made this town by and this city based on blood. The blood does not make you clean. The law of God does. You've established your city by sin. You don't have to obey the law. You're made free of the law. Nobody made you free of the law. 13. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the peoples labor for the fire and the nations weary themselves for vanity? Nothing. This is what they did. God told you he was going to do this. Here it is. It didn't tarry long, did it? Like you just woke up and there it is. See? Because that's exactly what just happened. You woke up and there it is. God is causing them to labor for the fire. And they're bringing them in too. And heaping them up. Casting them in. This is the furnace. We'll get to the furnace with Daniel. They left it out in Genesis. Or we would have learned about it with Abraham and his brother Heron. When Nimrod cast them into the furnace. And Heron died. 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. See, God's going to make his plan known in him. This marvelous work that we talked about in the last chapter yesterday. Nobody's forgot, have they? God said he's going to do a marvelous work. And now we begin to see this marvelous work God's done. 15. Woe unto him that gives his neighbor drink. That puts your venom there too and makes him drunk also. That you may look on their nakedness. Woe to you. Who do you think you are. Running around. Making everybody drunk. Making everybody drunk. This venom is your understanding. Your lies. Your, your idol you've made. And you make your neighbor drunk as well. So you can what? Look at their sin. Look at their nakedness. How they've been uncovered. And you look in upon their sin. 16. You are filled with shame instead of glory. Drink you also and be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto you. And filthiness shall be upon your glory. And this is exactly what God's done. It's exactly what God's doing. See. Shame. Shame brought on you. Shame on your glory. Now you drank. Well you've drunk already see. As soon as you give your neighbor a drink, you drunk. Yeah. And you were uncovered. This is the cup of the Lord's right hand. This is the marvelous work. The right hand, the work of God. See? And you're a witness. You are a witness against yourself for what you've done. Filthiness is upon your glory. 17, for the violence done to Lebanon shall cover you, and the destruction of the beast, which made them afraid because of the men's blood, for the violence done to the land and to the city and all that dwell therein. For once again, this is what you've done. This is the violence you've done unto the city. that you caused men and murdered them and killed, brought their soul now and caused it to bow down Unto an altar that should have never been built. And this was the violence done to Lebanon. That place that was made white. That beautiful city. It was destroyed. Destroyed. God had it destroyed. It was taken by violence. And the destruction of these beasts. These beasts. They, these idols they had made. They called me into error. 18. What profits the graven image that the maker thereof has graven in? Even the molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. What profit is there in this? Gold and silver and you line your pockets and deliver the souls of men into hell? Is this your profit? Is this this is the ignorance you've made for your idol. And you're the teacher of lies. 
rottenness, molt and image, that which you formed up with your mouth and your lies and your lack of understanding. And this is how you've graven it and made it and built it up, raised it up. We're going to find out what it looks like later on. The prophets are going to tell us exactly what it looks like. We're going to leave no doubt before it's over, see. 19, woe unto him that says to the wood, awake, to the dumb stone, arise. Can this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there's no breath at all in the midst of it. It just hangs there, and there's death hanging there what you see. Death. God's already said it is a death. Death. These that are dead in it. Woe to him now that says to the wood awake. Wake up. Arise. Speak. He can't say nothing. See. It's dead. It's overlaid with gold and silver. This gold that was belonged to God. That silver that which you've caused it to pass through the fire. There it is. There's no breath in it. Let's see, Twenty. But the Lord's in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. God's waiting. How long is it going to take before you wake up? Have understanding. God's done this. God's done this. Wake up. Turn unto the Lord your God. Get understanding. He's done this marvelous work to prove himself once again. Wake up and behold God. All right. We're going to move on to chapter 3.